Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank Jerry, Jerry Simpson, for the invitation. I am grateful for the possibility of presenting researches on electronic cigarettes. No. Is the, is the mic? Could you get close to the mic? Okay. I just need new page. Uh, I am grateful for the possibility of presenting researches on electronic cigars in Poland, which have been conducted since 2010. All results shown in this presentation were performed in two scientific centers in Poland, namely Medical University of Silesia and Institute of Occupational Medicine and Environmental Health, partly with cooperation um, with scientific center from US. In our country, we have 58 million citizens, 9.3 million smokers, about our about 1.3 million papers, and only two scientific centers, which I mentioned before, that provide laboratory science on e-cigarettes. But numerous of comments about e-cigarettes from different sources, uh, including scientific one. Unfortunately, mostly negative and misleading. What can I say for it? Just common sense is not so common. It's not mine, it's Voltaire. Uh, and no other end. Our research were concentrated on following topics. Comparison of selected toxicant in tobacco smoke and in vapor from e-cigarettes. Accurately labeled nicotine levels in e-cigarettes and e-liquids. E influence of aerosol generating parameters and flavors on carbonyl compounds level in vapor. Second hand exposure from e-cis. Prevalence of e-electronic cigarettes use in our adolescent in Poland and ongoing research influence of electronic cigarettes use on cardiovascular release factor. One of our most important research was done in cooperation with team from the University of San Francisco. Uh, as you see in the table, toxicant, toxicant average ratio levels, this is this part here, um, average ratio levels from conventional cigarette and e cigarette have high to very high value, what indicates that the amount of this toxicant is much lower in vapor in comparison with tobacco smoke. The same situation uh, is with concentration of heavy metals, lead and cadmium. Why it is important? This is the last part, last part, because one of the major source of this heavy metal exposure is tobacco smoke. And probably, as you know, lead is a risk factor of cardiovascular diseases and cadmium is classified by International Venture for Research on Cancer as carcinogen belong to first group. It's mean carcinogenic to human. We found that on the one toxic compound with similar concentration in tobacco smoke and vapor, it is nicotine. Therefore, our following study was concentrated on nicotine. First question was, does e-cigarettes deliver nicotine effectively? The second question, what parameters influence on the nicotine delivery? And the third question, is the manufacturer description of nicotine concentration accurate? According to the first question, we checked 16 electronic cigarettes and brands and models. At the time, we had electronic cigarette first and second generation. In general, the relationship between cumulative dose of nicotine and number of parts looks like on the graph. And conclusions you can see on the screen. On this basis, I think that overdosing of nicotine at typical electronic cigarette use, usage is impossible. All 16 graphs graph are shown on the screen. As you can see, profiles of nicotine delivery depends on 
the product mm, tested. So finally, we concluded that the cigarette brands and models differ in their efficiency and consistency of nicotine vaporization, and the amount inhaled from 15 puffs, puffs is lower in comparison with smoking a conventional <laughs> cigarette. There are two reasons why the shape is different. First one, kind of nicotine solution. The most effective nicotine delivery we observed when propylene glycol was used as the solvent. The second one, battery voltage, but that could be predicted because increase of voltage is, is connected with increase of vaporized solvent volume in the same way. And answer for the third question. Is the manufacturer description of nicotine concentration accurate? In the year 2000, um, we compared the detected amounts of nicotine in refill nicotine solution with amounts declared on the label. In the year 2012, uh, the relative difference in concentration were between minus 89 to 28%. If we take EA MSA standards as refer referent value, we get 54% liquid with inconsistent nicotine uh, concentration. But in the year 2014, only 22 liquids didn't meet standards. In my opinion, it indicates that the liquid quality has been improving. And now, please let me go. Uh, I moment, just to be please. Please let me, uh, please let me come back to the first slide. Please look at the, the yellow part on the screen. We didn't find <coughs> mention carbon compounds in liquid. I mean formaldehyde, acetaldehyde, acrylamine. By presence in vapor, you know, is a result of solvent decomposition in high temperature. This fact is well known in chemistry. The following uh, experiment were con concentrate on the influence of temperature and solvent on carbonyl compounds levels in vapor. I said temperature, but uh, in fact we uh, we investigated um, uh, battery output voltage, but these parameters are strictly connected, as you see uh, below. Our conclusion were, were following: the solvent and the battery in, uh, solvent and battery voltage significantly affects level of carbon compounds. Increased voltage resulted in increasing formaldehyde, acetaldehyde, and acetone levels. And the health risk will still probably be lower in comparison with smoking, because the highest levels of carbon compounds were similar to levels in tobacco smoke. Another factor um, which influences on amount of carbonic compounds in vapor can be caused by flavor. We observed that cherry flavored uh, electronic cigarette expose users to the inhalation irritant benzaldehyde. In this research, we notice following conclusion. Uh, please uh, refer to point four. The benzaldehyde doses inhaled were often higher than doses inhaled but, uh, from cigarette. However, the estimated median daily inhaled dose from sherry flavored electronic cigarette would be 100 times lower than PEL dose in the workplace. PEL does mean permissible uh, exposure levels. Uh, looking at these pictures and considering much lower levels of toxicant in vapor than in tobacco smoke, the result we obtained in the next research didn't surprise us. This research was, was conducted with volunteers who were experienced dual users. We found that the average concentration of nicotine resulting from smoking tobacco cigarette was 10 times and a higher than from EC. The mean concentration of PM <coughs> resulting from smoking tobacco cigarette was seven times higher than from e-cigarettes. And finally, in contrast to cigarette smoking, no carbon monoxide and volatile organic compounds in an exposure chamber 
after use of electronic cigarettes were found. Prevalence of electronic cigarettes use among adolescents in Poland we estimated uh, on the basis two survey conducted between 2010, 2011, and 2014, 2015. We observed uh, that current use of electronic cigarettes among adolescents in Poland was significantly higher in the second survey than in the first survey. In my opinion, some limitation is connected with the question we asked in the survey and which were adopted from CDC. Uh, you see this question on the screen. Uh, according to this question, current e-cigarette user is a person who takes even a single puff in the past 30 days. From my point of view, this question shows e-cigarettes experimentation rather than currently usage. It seems that we have some problem with the dual user because we have shown that the dual user were more likely to smoke tobacco cigarette on a daily basis and less likely to smoke fewer cigarettes per day than exclusive tobacco cigarette user. The main <coughs> conclusion from our research are following. A cigarettes are much safer than conventional cigarettes, and second-hand exposure from electronic cigarettes is much lower mm -hmm. than from conventional cigarettes. In my opinion, only these two conclusions are strong enough to encourage smokers to switch to vaping. I think that some problem exists with prevalence electronic cigarettes in adolescents. Uh, <coughs> but I hope that field survey, which has already been finished and which was conducted in the same school with, will give us comprehensive answer. And now shortly about our ongoing research. Looking at regulator and policymaker decision, uh, in my opinion, the only way to convince them to electronic cigarettes is to show health benefit after switching from conventional cigarettes to electronic cigarettes. Therefore, at present, uh, we are investigating the influence of electronic cigarette use on cardiovascular risk factor. Uh, we, est we investigated a group, group of 163 non-smoker, e-user, uh, dual user, and smoke. Currently, sorry, currently we are analyzing um, uh, 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 classical risk factor, non-classical risk factor, emerging risk factor, and heavy metals, lead, and uh, cadmium. In this moment, we have some crude results without adjusting of age, uh, sex, uh, body mass index, <coughs> concentration of creatine, which show a weak but positive trend <coughs> concerning plasma concentration of high-density lipoproteine, uh, triglyceride, and fibrinogen, which belongs to inflammatory factors after switching from conventional cigarettes to electronic cigarettes. On the other hand, we observe huge benefits concerning blood cadmium concentration. After switching to electronic cigarette, cadmium levels normalize to non-smoker levels. Present sense research were possible to due um, uh, to my team from Institute of Occupational Health, um, uh, Institute of Occupational Medicine, my PhD student from Medical University of Silesia, and my former students and co-worker till 2030, Maciek Goniewicz, currently working in the Rosalba Cancer Institute. Thank you for your attention.